you know, a, uh, a very telling stat. We lead the nation at three point shoot. And we didn't take a three point shot to the 17th possession of the game. And, and you know, as, as I think Doug said, you know, we're turning down great shots, or good shots for great shots. And uh, that may have been as unselfish of an offensive performance that I've ever been part of. Uh, you know, just uh, the ball movement and, and guys turning down shots and, and uh, getting it to the hot hand. And, it was uh, uh, it was a thing of thing of beauty from an offensive standpoint, and uh, you know we scored on uh, 12 of our thir first 13 possessions, and uh, I think only one of those shots was 10 feet. Everything else was inside of that. Uh, then you got a 24 to six lead. You've got the crowd into the game, and you've set the tone. And defensively, um, you know we had some some discussions the last few days just about being a little bit more aggressive uh, with our hands and being a little bit more active on the ball. And I think I thought we. Uh, we, we knocked some balls loose and were able to score in transition as a result of that. And, you know, Gregory did a terrific job on Carmichael to start the game. He never let him get going, and that's uh, that's critical when you're playing against a guy that uh, has, has had a hot streak like uh, Jackie has. Questions? Was that the best start you had? To uh, yeah, I mean, considering how talented Illinois State is, um, you, you look across that lineup, they, they got a, they've got a lot of weapons. Brian Allen would like to play us 30 times if he could. Um, you know, we, we just have not had an answer for him. And, um, you know, Nick Moore is a very talented freshman, Tyler Brown. Uh, his numbers speak for themselves. And then their front line of Wilkins, Eke, and Carmichael. Uh, we, we did a good job on those guys tonight. Um, but they're very talented basketball players. So to get off to a start like that in, in a game that uh, obviously we were very concerned about um, is a real credit to our guys. You had six guys in double figures. You're getting a lot of balance across the board. Is that something that's really kind of picked up the last few weeks, especially? Well, our freshmen have played better, and uh, you know, Will Artino gave us another great lift tonight. Uh, you know, sometimes when you go to the bench with when you're replacing a, a guy like Gregory, who's an All-Conference type player, with uh, with a freshman, uh, you're expecting some sort of a fall off. And in recent weeks, that hasn't been the case. With Will, in some ways, is elevated. Uh, our play with his activity uh, around the backboards, and uh, he's got great hands and a great feel for the game. And he's just continued to improve. And I uh, thought Austin Chapman, David Dingman gave us minutes again, good minutes again tonight. Uh, Josh Jones came off and did what he did, and uh, you know Ethan continues to play good basketball. So you know we've got we have ten guys that we're really comfortable with um, in almost any situation. Greg would seem to make himself a presence lately to dominate. At times when he's on the floor. Yeah, you know, the foul trouble hurt him the first half. Uh, you know, so he didn't play a lot of minutes. And then the second half, I didn't think he started the half well. But when he went back the second time, uh, he was throwing bodies around, and that's that's the way we want him to play. Uh, he, he is. Uh, I think he's as good a defensive player as, as there is in the league. He just he neutralizes uh, the opposing center. And as you know, you look at Carmichael's numbers from last week, and you look at him tonight, and you know the difference is Greg Rich and he can. Take two more. Talk a little bit about having to go on the road for these next two. It's been nice to be home for two in a row, but the, there's a trade-off there. You know, sooner or later you're going to go on the road for a couple. And uh, in Northern Iowa, I think so. They lost two or three games at home, and uh, you know, obviously they they played us as outside of Missouri State here and played us as well as anybody, and maybe played us better than Missouri State did there because they led really virtually the entire game. Uh, so they did a good job plugging up the inside. And, Getting back to the shooters, and uh, we didn't defend, defend the three-point line very well the first time around. We to do a better job of that Saturday. And, you know, Evansville has been, uh, you know, re remarkably consistent. And if you, you start to dissect their conference record and you consider the close games uh, and the near misses they've been in, they're, they're a team that's, uh, you know, not far from being exactly where we are and where Wichita is. Okay, answer the one question about. More wins, does it add pressure? Some teams almost seem that it would almost seem to be true. This team doesn't seem to react that way. Uh, you heard Doug's answer. I mean, they, they've been very good about staying in the present. And I think part of it has been, as I mentioned before, there, there's an expectation placed upon this group all the way back to the summer with the attention that, that Doug and Gregory garnered because of their play with uh, USA basketball and, and the best one. 
national team and then with our Bahamas trip. So they've had to answer questions and deal with expectations a long time. And I think as you do that, I think you become accustomed to it and you understand, you, you take it for what it's worth. You, you, you take a pat on the back just like you do a kick in the rear. Um, you know, you just, you try to understand the message, you say thank you, and you, you move on to the, to the next task. All right.